Hey there YouTube, this is SJM4306 and I just got a little tongue tied. Anyway, I've been running back and forth and basically this is my last day of uh, of break and I wanted to quickly throw together a mod slash hack slash whatever. So, this is it. I had found online, apparently um, they made a open source um, clone of the Xeno GC mod chip for the GameCube. And so, that's exactly what I have installed right now. So... This tiny little circuit board here um, basically is a AT Mega 8 and I flashed it with the firmware from the mod chip. I uh, wired it up, have uh, two indicator LEDs, one for that the chip's getting power and the other that it, it enables the, the pack basically. And so you can see here, I've already modded this uh, GameCube, um, did the, the trim pot mod to increase the power output of the laser so it can read recordable uh, mini DVDs. And so, uh, I'll fire this guy up, and you can see that it indeed does work. So let me get a controller in there. And video cable. And sort of power. You can see I have a LCD set up as well, so I'll try to get everything in shot as best that I, that I can. So let's fire it up. Fires up like normal. Green light comes on, and you should see that it starts the, the copy in a second. And it's just saying I don't have a memory card, which I don't. But you can see it loads, and... Ah, yes. Beautiful. So now I don't have to use um, this SD Media Launcher disc that I bought, uh, which was... It worked, but... It's a little bit annoying. So now this is basically mod chipped and it will play backups of games, uh, which is awesome. So let's just run it for a little bit, make sure it works. I haven't played this in forever. <laughs> okay, anyway, uh, that's enough of that. So you can see that everything is working. And yeah, so I set it up so that when you put the case on, um, it doesn't block the airflow. It's above that portion. And because of this grate in the side, you should still be able to see the indicator LED. So let me get that uh, back together and uh, let's see how that looks. I'll be back in a second. Okay, so all screwed back together and just give you a view of um, it working, you know, while the case is on. You can see right through the side there. And it goes green once it's done reading. And this guy will start right up. So, yay. This will be definitely nicer than having to swap the discs and whatnot uh, with the old method. And there we go. See, it works perfectly. Loads. Get a green light there. Uh, I don't... I might do an LED mod. Um, I think orange does look pretty cool with the black anyway, so... But you can see everything works. Um, this was actually a very easy mod to do. Let me turn this down. Yeah, so all it really required was... Um, I ended up using a, an Arduino to program the AT Mega 8. I uh, just um, loaded up as an ISP uh, with the firmware, hooked it up to the the um, the ICSP pins on the AT Mega 8, and then um, all I had to do was let's see, I used a command line to flash the the bin file provided. I'll I'll, I'll put a link to the instructables that I used. So I uh, used a command line to flash that, and then I had to change the clock speed uh, of the internal oscillator on the AT Mega 8. And that's all I had to do. And then I just soldered it onto a little bit of perf board according to the schematic in the instructables. And, you know, it works. So definitely very happy with that. So this will be very nice um, having this, um, you know, to play my backups. Even though I do have a, a hacked Wii also with the Wii Key Fusion. So 
I could just as easily play it on there, but sometimes there's just something about playing it on the original systems. Um, so yeah, this is definitely very, very neat and will give me joy, uh, hopefully for a very long time. So yeah, um, if you have any questions about this modification, um, I can try to help. But as I said, pretty much everything that you would possibly need to know is in the Instructables um, that I will link down below. But yeah, this is this is awesome, man. So yeah, all in all, that only took me... Flashing the chip took me about an hour, and that's only because I miswired it to the, the Arduino. Um, in order to program it, it wasn't being recognized, but I figured I swapped like two of the wires. Once I switched them, it worked perfectly actual soldering and everything that only took like not even half an hour so all in all definitely worth it the chips uh the at mega 8 i think i got for a dollar i got two for a dollar or something like that off ebay i'm not sure if you can use a, another chip um like the 168 or uh 328 um possible because i i'm pretty sure that the architecture is identical just that the memory is different uh, but you might need to modify the the bin file, the hex file, um, with the Xeno GC um, firmware on it. So I can't I can't say anything about that. But um, yeah, if you have any other questions or any uh, if you need anything specific, yeah, just let me know down in the comments below or send me a PM. So anyway, um, and so ends my winter break, unfortunately. Uh, but I will spend it playing some Legend of Zelda now. So until next time. I am going to be busy playing, so I'll see you guys later.